gentlemen. Uh, it's my privilege and honor to welcome uh, uh, Raghunath Ramaswamy, the founder CEO of Spectrum Consulting Chennai. Truth be told at the outset, uh, never ever in my dreams, I ever imagined that one day I'll get to introduce Raghu as I fondly call him. He was one of my gurus who actually taught me the nuances of LinkedIn way back in 2013 when I attended one of his sessions at Hyderabad. Raghu uh, is an alum of IIT Delhi and has worked across organizations uh, spanning departments like sales and marketing, uh, operations, projects, software developments, and so on. And uh, Raghu has six IPs to his credit. Along with that, he has worked a lot on recruitment industry, especially on the application tracking system, resume passes, and learning management system. As an extension of uh, recruitment, Raghu thought it white and he was slowly drawn towards LinkedIn and social media. And that's where he developed a love for it. I would call him as an evangelist for LinkedIn. He has trained close to 1,000 students or 1,000 companies across uh, on the nuances of LinkedIn and how they can leverage it to their advantage. Raghu, uh, on his past, during his leisure, he is a movie buff and, uh, and he also is an active blogger. Uh, one word that I remember from Raghu during my last training, and I keep on sharing wherever I go for training, that LinkedIn or for that matter, any social media, the mantra is don't find, get found. That's all from me. Raghu, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Raghu, and welcome again. Thank you for your kind words, Arup. And uh, thank you, Sri Nagarajan IAS, for this opportunity to be a part of the Government of Gujarat initiative for the skills uh, you know, upgrade during the lockdown period. Yeah. So the agenda for today's session is, uh, as uh, you know, I take it from where Arup left, you know, and I'll kind of refine that further, you know, there are two aspects, you know, we normally search for our requirements, but social facilitates getting found. And, uh, the, you know, the central concept for today's discussion, whether it is social or whether it is LinkedIn, uh, you know, whatever be the social platform, whether it is LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, the fundamentals of social remain the same. The concept is enhance your social media presence and get found for your needs. So this is something that we will visit in detail. And the second important question is that, how do, we, how do students become visible for their needs on, being linked on LinkedIn? Third important aspect that we will address is how do we construct an effective LinkedIn profile? And the third will be a viable strategy for students to achieve their goals. And then I will take, we'll be most happy to take questions. Is this part of it clear? In the sense that I'm audible, we are in good, we are in good nick actually. Can you confirm to me that I'm being heard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Just a second, please. So this is our concept, enhance your social media presence and get found for your needs. And the most important question that you have to ask is that, are you leveraging any social platform adequately? And specifically, are you leveraging LinkedIn adequately? You, the most important aspect that you have to know is that LinkedIn has about 575 million members. So one question that you have to ask is that, if you open a LinkedIn account, will you automatically have access to 575 million members. And the second question you have to ask yourself, you know your needs. For your needs, do you really want to connect with all the 575 million members? So these are two questions that you have to keep in mind and we shall revisit this at a later point of time. So LinkedIn is free, right? And uh, you can, it doesn't take much time to open an account and it is easy to add connections very easily. But the usage of LinkedIn, the experience of using LinkedIn has been very different for people. Some are able to use LinkedIn more effectively than others. So, well, what we have to understand is that anybody in the planet is separated by anybody else by six levels of degrees of separation. 
and LinkedIn restricts this level to three levels. And uh, so the thing is that anybody on LinkedIn uh, sets out to find suitable partners. And as I repeatedly keep on dinning this point, it's very important. You know, I've been trying to evangelize LinkedIn for the last seven or eight years, but many times this really does not sink into others. Okay, sink into many people. So, but it's very important that some people are more visible than others. They get searched more often and there is a greater traffic to their profile. So why is it different? So can the same question again and again, I keep asking is can just opening an account and adding connections automatically guarantee visibility and therefore ensure getting found on LinkedIn. You are in the center of the universe along with millions of others separated by six degrees where LinkedIn provides three visibility connections. And there's a lot of ongoing conversations on the planet on social media. What you have to understand is a very important word that, or a very important phrase that you have to keep asking yourself. All of you may be using social and you may be getting a lot of feeds, right? The most important thing is that you need to be able to detect the signal from the noise. So there is a lot of noise which is there. Extraordinary amount of noise comes, people keep on. A lot of conversations happen, but does, does it, is it really relevant to you? And you have to really define, you know, what you have to be able to detect the signal from the noise. So the other thing you have to also find, also keep in mind, it's like, a, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to build this logic here. Search is not a one way street. Okay. Like you have to remember that like, like you're searching for people. There are other people also searching for you. So this is the six degrees of separation. There are so many people trying to find. So you are being found while you are finding. But somebody was more visible than others and they got special attention and were found several times more than others. You got to ask yourself this question. As why were some profiles more visible than others? So what are the, we're going to understand the building blocks of social media. This is very important. Uh, and this is the same for all the social platforms, whether it is LinkedIn or whether it is Facebook or whether it is Twitter or whether it is Google Plus or Instagram or Pinterest, right? The identity is one of the most important, uh, so uh, important building blocks of social. Before you get into social, the most important question that you want to ask yourself is, why do I want to be in social? Right? So your profile has to very clearly be able to articulate why do you want to be in social? Right? That will determine the kind of people that you will get to collaborate with and the identity maps to your social media profile, a LinkedIn profile and Facebook profile. And the most important thing is that sharing of appropriate content, whether it is owned content or it is third party content participating in groups and getting involved in meaningful conversations. These are three more important social media building blocks. And this defines your engagement, right? Your engagement propels your social media presence, which enhances your reputation, which in turn gets converted to relationships and the relationships manifest itself into connections and vice versa. In the real world, you connect with people and establish relationships, but the relationships can only be refined if you have meaningful engagement. Otherwise, you're not really adding any value at all to that particular relationship. So I just go on to the next section. So the most important thing is that how does your social media presence get refined and get strengthened? One is the quality and completeness of your profile. We will come, we'll get more, more into the detail in the next slide about the quality and the completeness of the profile, but essentially the summary and your profile has to be really very interesting. It has to be fairly complete. It has to be represented by virtue of the right kind of keywords so that people are able to arrive at your particular profile. Then there has to be, see the thing is this, you have 575 million people. We will try to understand how the network is defined in LinkedIn in two slides after this and the quality and frequency of your engagement for your evolving audience. These are the three most important things actually that define your social media presence. So the, this is the difference between 
a person who is really very you know who is using this particular very powerful uh, instrument for furtherance of his career as well as personal life so so we will be visit here on quality and completeness of profile so the most important question you want to ask yourself this is the third time that i repeat but it's very important because i find that many people do not take the time to write this properly you have to ask yourself why do you want to be in linkedin and you have to articulate your linkedin profile reflecting your needs through the usage of keywords and they have to be packed amply in your profile the reason why you want to use the right kind of keywords and use them frequently is that the trick is that to use the keywords for which you want to get found with appropriate quality and quantity so like the you know like the search engine optimization traffic to your linkedin profile is always a function of keywords that means you have more number of suppose let us say that you want you you want to be found for a sales position or something like that then you got to use the keyword sales amply in your resume at different points of time so what happens is that you have to appear the key, two things one is that keyword represents the need for which you want to be found on linkedin and most importantly you have to appear at the top of the search results if you let us say for example you are finding out somebody and you know you let us say you require a carpenter and the carpenter is appearing on the eighth page or the ninth page of the search page you don't have the patience to go through seven pages or eight page to find out the guy you try to find out the carpenter who is appearing in the first two pages similarly if you want to get found for a sales position or something like that you need to appear in the top of the search results so you have to be able to write your profile very clearly why you are there and pack it with the right of right kind of keywords so that you get uh found for your needs right the second thing is that recommendations for an effective and meaningful network for your needs so you need to have a strategy to be able to nurture a qualitative and quantitative network the size of your network see the most important thing you have to ask yourself how is my experience in linkedin being defined it depends upon the size of your network i told you that in real life there are six degrees of separation in linkedin there are three degrees of separation level 1 level 2 level 3 so level 1 plus level 2 plus level 3 is actually defines the size of your network and how does it affect your linkedin experience it let us assume that the size of your network is 75 million and there are totally 575 million people which means that 575 minus 75 500 million linkedin members will not be a part of your network this will mean that those 500 million members will not have access to your profile you will not you will also not have access to the 500 million members it's vice versa okay do you want to connect you know you have to ask yourself the reason why i have asked this question do you want to connect with carpenters farmers or astronauts of the world which means the first you have to correlated back to the second second slide or the third slide where i asked there are 575 million people people do you want to really connect with all the 575 million people for your needs you know clearly who are the people that you want to connect with so the i'm using carpenters farmers and astronauts as a metaphor here because those may be those set of people may not the people that you want to connect with so you have to have a strategy to arrive at a relevant network for your needs right if you are searching out for a let us say you are a uh, you are a recruiter and you are looking to hire java people then you need to connect with all the java resources similarly if you are possibly wanting to set up a poultry farm then you need to find out who are the target customers who will consume the poultry goods so it's very important that you have to strategize to arrive at a relevant network for your needs and ensure that you will be found so what happens is that if you are constructing the appropriate network for your needs when normally what happens is that we use the keywords to search for people so when we when we use the keywords and when i am a part of the network i will be found on the top of the search results so this is the very important thing that you have to keep in mind the usage of the right kind of keywords you have to have a strategy to have the right kind of qualitative and qualitative network so what do you do you know what do smart searches do they connect with you 
they connect with your groups, they connect with your company. Let me just, one second please, just a second. Sorry about it. You connect with either your group, with you or your groups or your company. They research you, your experience, your groups or your company and expect your participation. Basically, they want you to comment, have meaningful conversations and basically collaborate with you on any aspect that they want to take it forward. What would you do if you found the right connections on a social network platform? You would go ahead and do similar things. You'll be able to find, you want to find and leverage professional networks, expand your personal network, target decision makers, focus on real people, gather intelligence, target decision makers, leverage warm introductions, meaningful conversations. So this is, a, this is maybe a dated slide, but what you have to understand is that LinkedIn helps in researching people and companies, increasing branding, marketing presence in the marketing place, reconnect with past business associates, uncover potential job opportunities, increase face-to-face -face network effectiveness, build a new relationship with potential customers, generate identification and business opportunities and build networking relationship with individuals. So we come here, we ask ourselves this important question. Does my LinkedIn profile articulate why I am present in LinkedIn? Is my LinkedIn profile complete in all respects? Does my LinkedIn profile have all the ingredients that will increase my visibility and improve the traffic to my LinkedIn page? Will my LinkedIn profile enhance my prospects of being found in search results? Do I have a strategy to network? Am I aware of the size and quality of the network? How have I organized my connections properly? Just a second, please. Muthi, I can't take the call now. I mean, I'm in a meeting, sorry. And Sorry about it. Have I organized my connections appropriately? What is the level and nature of engagement with my connections? Is there any predictable regularity and regimen that I adopt for using LinkedIn? So this is a very important aspect that if you're going to use LinkedIn, you need to have the right kind of regimen. So uh, in the sense that you need to be able, just like, for example, if you want to stay fit, you have a regimen for exercises, right? So similarly, you have to be able to get into a regimen of clearly being able to articulate why you want to be in LinkedIn. And uh, you also want to ask yourself, do I know how to track, analyze, refine and improve any LinkedIn experience? And more, more importantly, can you showcase yourself as a model user of LinkedIn as a weapon for strategic professional presence? And how can I detect room for getting more from my investment in LinkedIn? So we go on to the next section is how do I, how to construct an effective LinkedIn So the most important thing is the profile picture, right? Uh, you should invest. See, the thing is this, all of us are very judgmental in coming to some kind of conclusion or the other. And uh, therefore it is very important, uh, you know, it's your personal brand. And it's very important to have a good professional photograph, right? It definitely pays to have a good professional photograph because people are going to jump to a conclusion as soon as he's going to see the photograph. So photos should be warm, friendly, and inviting. It should be a head shoulder shot. You should wear your power outfit. It's a professional view and not your personal view. And here are some examples of good profile pictures and improve pictures and then maybe bad profile pictures. So this is not to be, uh, what is it called? Uh, underestimated at any point of time. And uh, people have very bizarre ideas of how they want to, you know, uh, what is it called, uh, want to project themselves. But there are no, uh, you know, brownie points for a bad picture, right? And then you have a professional element, elements of a professional headline. So this is also very important because element of a professional headline, you have to understand that it appears before your name. And this also occupies a prominent position in a number of other places across the LinkedIn site. That means search results display your professional headline along your name and photo as well as way to connect with them and common connections in group. So it also appears within your group. It also appears in your LinkedIn inbox. It also appears externally to the site as well, visible to those who find your profile via Google, right? So you have to take extreme care. When you have a very good photograph and a good tagline, 
that clearly uh, basically defines who you are, what you want to do. There are many ways in which you can represent your tagline. Two key considerations. Profile has to have a very good idea about what we do and who we are and increase probably increase the probability of being found through a search function. So it can be a job title in company like Satya Nadella has. He puts he's a CEO at Microsoft. It could also be a descriptive keyword, right? Somebody is an SEO analyst, somebody is a recruiter, somebody is a career coach, somebody is a professional freelance writer. So a descriptive keyword has the propensity to being found for your needs far higher than other things. But it could, also, it could also be a description of your general offering. Could be the one that is being used in your website, perhaps in your mail footer, or something that you have specifically designed for LinkedIn. So here is a gentleman, a friend of mine who's high, who hires returning Indians for senior management, known to fellow professionals as AK. So that's, he's put that as a tagline. Then there are direct market offerings, right? Somebody wants to, you know, says that he would like to do a free download of website templates. Other person is offering free astrology. Then there is people who actually want to push or promote a particular product. So these are the ways in which you can put, but you can also have other other kind of headlines. Like for example, if you're a salesman, you could just put, you could say, go ahead and say, uh, I don't sell, but I open up relationships. I don't make a sale, but I open up relationship. And it, it could also be to basically define your state of mind if you can actually go ahead and uh, see my profile, I have used uh, a tagline which says to hell with the bots, I'm ready for the war. So these are all ways in which you can brand, you can attract uh, you know, collaborators, you can attract attention, you can, you, know, you can project yourself. So here we come to the LinkedIn summary, right? So first impressions count, your LinkedIn summary. So the first, you know, when somebody sees your LinkedIn profile, the first thing is that he sees your photograph. Then he sees your tagline. Then he sees your summary. So it's very important that you are able to articulate this really beautifully because you catch the attention, right? First impressions count. And your LinkedIn summary is the first opportunity a potential collaborator gets to find out who you are beyond a photo and a title. So make most of these precious moments. And these are five tips and uh, make sure that you implement these five tips. So, uh, so here, uh, one, of the, one of the most important tips is that never leave a summary section blank. A lot of people leave the summary section blank. A summary section has to be filled in with all the 2000 keywords, tips one and two. If there are 2000 characters and you want to be found for something and you can articulate your needs with the right kind of keywords, then the chances that you will be found are greater. Then you have, you, you need to be able to tell stories, share your accomplishments, make it interesting and comprehensive so that it can attract collaborators on all fronts. We hope that they will make it far enough for your, for your experience section to read about what you have done. So summary, once people see that the summary is very interestingly written, then people move down actually. So, it's also important that you articulate your competencies in the areas that you like to collaborate with your prospective collaborators and include your contact information. Make it easy for the people to find out, find you. If you are comfortable, include your phone number and email. Actually, there is a contact section as well, but I think there are people who use a summary section also to put their phone number and contact number. So examples of, I try to include, I try to take some good summaries from LinkedInInsights.com. These are all people who are fresh out of college. And uh, there are other summaries which are there, which you should actually go and take a look at. And these are the skills and expertise, uh, examples of keywords which are there for which you want to get found. I think you can actually easily go to navigate to the skills and, ex skills and, the skills and expertise area and then get these. So I've actually given the keywords for recruiters, sales, manufacturing, ID delivery, but there are ample number of keywords that are available to represent your needs and you can discover them. So what is a viable strategy for the students to achieve their goals? So it's very important, I guess, since the majority of the people that I'm addressing are students, uh, it's very important, uh, you know, that they realize some of the ground realities in the sense that getting a degree does not mean automatically that you will get a job. 
So you have to understand that you're not entitled to a job. It means you have to earn it actually. That's very important. So, so a student studies a professional course, I assume that there are other people as well, is to, there are maybe objectives to get a job. So these are general truths of life that, you know, what, what does it help him to earn a livelihood? Most importantly, to be able to express himself and also, you know, carve out an identity for himself. But you have to remember when you are actually going ahead and getting a job and trying to find out an employment, I am sharing this out of the experience of the last 25 years. These are big distractors. You know, the brand is a big distractor. So you want to really learn a job. And if you really go to a big company, chances are that you may not learn uh, many things actually, because they have ample number of resources and they've kind of broken down the entire process and you might end up being a cog in the machine. So salaries again, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, what is it called, uh, uh, you know, focus on salaries. I think most of the newspapers, et cetera, do a disservice saying that, you know, out of college, you get a one crore salary, a 15 lakh salary, a 20 lakh salary. A salary is not really, should not be the key factor for, you know, you should look forward to getting a job. And some people decide on working place close to a home, there's a glamour associated with the company. And then there might be people may say an overseas travel, a five day week, a great office address, or it is an MNC or work from home or some of your close relatives. So let me quickly say very important things. I'm trying to converge, okay, uh, with LinkedIn, just marry this with LinkedIn, a few slides more then you will understand what is the reason for these few slides here. The components of a job, any job for that matter, are knowledge, skills, qualities, and tasks. And irrespective of the different kinds of jobs available and the choices available, any decision to choose a job or career has to be a function. Basically, all of us have a certain level of knowledge, skills, and qualities to perform a job. We also have a flair, ability to understand, assimilate, and knowledge and skills in the chosen areas. There's a temperament needed to execute the job, and there are necessary qualities to do the job. Enjoy doing the job and enjoying doing the job in the chosen area. One could easily do the job still, but may not enjoy, you know, in the sense that they may do the job and still not enjoy the whole thing. I think I need to articulate this point better. I'm sorry about confusion there. So you have to remember who pays your salary. So the salary, the customer pays the salary, the prospective employer, your employer doesn't pay the salary. The prospective employer's customer pays your salary. And why would he pay you the salary? Well, the service is rendered by your prospective employer who in turn passes a portion of the money realized to you as a salary. How so you've got to empathize with your prospective employer, how competitive it is for your prospective employer. So today acquiring talent is a very complex, competitive business and your prospective employer has to be extremely well organized and very efficient and knowledgeable workforce to stay ahead of competition. So what would, you know, so you have to understand this and then you have to understand what is the expectation of the prospective employer. Unless you're competent, skillful, knowledgeable, and efficient, he may never be able to service customers well and earn a profit to sustain and scale his business. So there are no free lunches in life. So while you're being hired from a college, you're hired for your potential. There's the initial learning curve. So we, have, we are all aware that there is a gap between the academy, what the academy offers and what the industry needs. So in case of a software service organization, I'm just more familiar with software service organization, and hence I'm taking the example. So many of the people who come out of college, they need a training program. And I've, I've said in, you know, kind of said three months, but sometimes the training may go on for six months to a year before they are deployed on real time projects. So you have to understand that when you're coming out of college, you're being actually recruited for your potential. And then your existing employer has to really spend the time and energy to be able to get, get you to speed. Okay. So this is this represents a cost for the software or, the organi or whatever organization, which they, so you have to, when you're going for your job hunt, you have to understand the emerging world order. You have to understand the technology trends. What are the impacts of technology trends on market and culture? You have to recognize emerging markets and market trends, job trends, business practices. So once you have, how do you, you know, now the thing is this, there's a disconnect between the academia and the industry. So information about technology, markets, business practices, jobs needs to be available for you to make 
informed choices. Who will provide you with the industry connect? The alumni connect, alumni who work far, far and wide are the first natural choice for the industry connection and information. Professional working in the respective industry, human resource professionals, industry bodies like CII, and events and conferences will again allow you to network with professionals. So how will you set the boundaries of your job hunt? You basically, it's very important to identify companies which can employ you based on your academic background, knowledge, skills, qualities, and temperament. The companies that you can identify is a finite set. It is imperative that you draw a list of these companies. Based on your capability and expertise, after having chosen a target set of companies, what are the parameters you will try to understand about the target company? What are the kind of roles which offers professional growth and means to express yourself? Areas of work which can have an impact on future growth, growth potential of chosen companies and prospect of industry, core values of organization, compensation and benefits, location and brand. Point number one to four is very critical. Five and six are less significant, but you really have to you know, focus on these first two points. So how do you think LinkedIn can help you ascertain this information? So company information gives information about the company, the employees, employee insights and their followers. You need to be able to follow companies which you want to really get hired. Then gives generally updates about the companies. If you follow the companies, there's a follow button that you have to click. You can actually get general updates about the company. Products and services is now being replaced by showcase pages actually. So you might want to follow the showcase pages. How do you think, you know, in a sense you can actually participate in groups and you can even form groups and conduct them. This enhances your social media experiences and gives you greater visibility and reach. Most important thing is that you have to be able to share updates. You can either, you know, the content can be classified into two ways. One is the owned content and the other is the third party content. And owned contents are normally, you can write it or you can make a video or whatever it is. The third party content is made by somebody else. But then you can share updates on topics that you really feel very strong about which will help you to kind of connect with people that you can collaborate. So what purpose does your LinkedIn profile serve? You create an identity for yourself with a LinkedIn profile. You create a reputation and social media presence for yourself by participating in groups, sharing updates and conversing intelligently. The process of creating a reputation and social media presence helps you develop a relationship through connection. I'm just reiterating some of the important points. So by developing relationships, now you come to the third important point, which is actually a logical extension of what we have discussed so far. By developing relationship with professionals in other companies and following it up with compiling, you've got to compile, you've got to collate, you've got to validate the data because you don't want to assume that the data is really true. Right? You've got to validate the data. You should get a reality connect, you know, in a sense that the most important thing what LinkedIn will give you is that it will give you a reality connect of the available jobs, associated trends, what is the prevailing market compensation? Information about growth prospects with an organization, local geopolitical conditions at workplace, and any other aspects that you want to know about target companies that you want to apply. If a lot of associated information is already available on the internet, how is the information available on LinkedIn different from the one available on the internet? In LinkedIn, the information can be validated with reliable, trusted contacts. So that's very important that actually you can go ahead and you can establish a relationship with the person and then you can get a first-hand information of what is true. What are the basic hygiene factors that you'll adopt before designing? You must set up a proper LinkedIn profile which showcases your capability. So how does a connection get converted to a relationship? You need to reach out to the connection and start interacting with the connection. Only then seeds of relationship are shown. As a job seeker, what are the things that you will do to increase your social presence? Social media presence is an activity that requires considerable application and gets established over a period of time. So you may write blogs, effectively participate in groups, share valuable information consistently, converse intelligently to acquire appreciable social media presence. So the most next question is that, what could be the ideal network size at what rate should it increase? Is there any specific LinkedIn regimen that you should arrive? One cannot determine an ideal network size. However, it is a quality that matters. It is important to connect with trusted sources. Your connections must happen on a regular basis. And the whole world is your playing ground. You can connect with people in New Zealand. You can connect with people in Japan. You can connect with people in South Africa, South America, anywhere you wish. And uh, so your 
you know you don't need to you know the world has become a the world has become flat and an even playing ground for everybody that wants to really make a mark for himself so you know to you need to keep your needs and future needs in mind you will benefit by focusing on the seven social media building blocks and arrived at a linkedin regimen the regimen could include writing blogs people who can't write you can make you can have other ways you can participate actively using third party content you can participate actively in groups sharing updates improve your connections and converting them the key is not to have connections the key is to be able to reach out to the connection be able to establish a relationship and thank you so much and i'm happy to take any questions okay the first question uh, comes uh, it's like this what type of post should i upload on linkedin it depends on what uh, you know in the sense that what is your need right it correlates exactly to your need so see ideally speaking uh, some of the things that you should never do about in a social media is never talk about politics never talk about anything controversial because i think it's very important that you create a very positive image of, about yourself and don't get into anything contentious right you don't want to get into conflicts you want to basically go ahead and establish have positive strokes with people who want to connect but what you want to post is actually depends on why you want to be in linkedin that is very important and for what purpose suppose if you are recruiter you could actually put up job posts right you could put put up motivational posts for your who is your audience that is very important if you if you know what who your audience is then and you know what the needs of the audience is then you will automatically put up posts which are beneficial to the audience that means you are there because it's a it's a two way street right and social is about caring right you really care for the other person you care for the community if you care for the community automatically you know there is an involvement okay so you can go ahead with, have i answered the question can i go yeah I, yeah it was well. uh, so the next question is uh, it comes from i guess one of the students sir if our fb instagram and other social media id can have the threat of to be hacked then is this hacking possible for our linkedin account too yeah i guess hacking is definitely possible i don't think you know there is something you know in the sense that the moment you come into a social uh, media and today the digital footprints are all over the place so if i may use the word all of us are naked in a digital in a social world right all the footprints are there everywhere so the lack you don't need to feel insecure about it whether you like it or not anyway uh, you know there are so many digital footprints that you know that you will leave behind that you know one can configure your social profile or your profile right so definitely linkedin data can be hacked so this and then it is is a threat of being hacked okay there is a breach of data which is possible which is what most of the that's the reason why you have a caso function in most of the companies data breach is a why do you have the designation of data protection officer you have a data protection officer because data is bound to be breached as simple as that can we go on to the next question okay next uh, how to play with words on linkedin while creating a profile as sometimes it happens that we have a lot to say but portraying it becomes a challenge so basically they are talking of articulation that's what i understand so you have a 2000 2000 character uh, this one and i think uh, you know brevity is an art so right like, see the thing is this the idea of getting into social is also uh, social is an is a such a useful instrument that it helps you to reinvent yourself right so 2000 character if see people use twitter very effectively right it used to have some 100 plus characters earlier right today they have made it uh, since 255 plus or whatever it is but you can actually express anything that you want in uh, 2000 characters 2000 characters is a lot of characters to be able to express as long as you know your needs i think it's ample enough and you can let's say let me help you with that a little bit more actually so it is not just that the summary alone let us say that you have a lot of meaningful things to put so one is the summary the other thing is that many of your activities could have been actually captured as a video or you could have given you know there are there's a gallery there to put many of your accomplishments further if you still think that there are many things that actually kind of overflows then you have the summary section right 
you've been working for five years or you're a student somewhere, there's ample, uh, you know, places. Like, for example, if you're a student, there is a project section which is there. So there, there are n number of places where you can actually showcase. The, there are more than adequate places where you can showcase your, your potential or your cap capabilities. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, the yeah. next is, uh, uh, does LinkedIn check all our information? Basically, someone is asking if I post something, are the informations validated by the concerned companies? Whatever we put in. Can you... Uh, Okay, so I need to understand the question. You, you, what are you, what, are you saying that the information which is what, whatever information say I post uh, X Y Z information. So yeah. what are the chances of my information, whatever I posted, getting validated by the company I am applying for or wherever whoever is seeing it? Absolutely. So, I, if as a recruiter, I would actually, uh, you know, there are so many ways in which I will find out whether that profile is genuine or not. I will not take it prima facie for granted. So there are conversations which the person can do. There are going to be consistent conversations. And is that, you know, in a sense that the from two days, there are a n number of ways. That's an art by itself to be able to uh, dissect a LinkedIn profile. And uh, everybody is not going to take the LinkedIn profile. You know, if people will definitely see it, uh, you know, in a sense that they'd like to validate that information, right? Definitely, 100% on. It's not in an access basis. Somebody can put something and somebody else who's consuming it will directly buy it, unless he's very naive. Uh, Sri Nagarajan, you have something to ask? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just carrying on this conversation. Right. See, the purpose uh, of introducing LinkedIn to the uh, finishing school students is for them to have a living uh, resume, living curriculum vitae. It is a very, very living curriculum vitae on the internet. So if somebody asks you, or you want to introduce yourself or say something, and somebody wants to know about you, basically you have to only give your LinkedIn profile. It has who you are, what you are currently doing, what you have been doing, your entire personality from the point of jobs and professional right. purpose. It is already there. So uh, Mr. Raghu, I think uh, you should also touch upon uh, the difference between uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. Why LinkedIn is better uh, for the students uh, for their future? Because we are looking at the career and the entrepreneurship uh, angle here. So why we should have a student should have a LinkedIn profile? Uh, how it is better, uh, even useful to have a LinkedIn profile, even if they have a Facebook account? Sir, Absolutely. can I answer this question, sir? Can I answer this question? Uh, yeah, you can uh, you can answer and then uh, Raghu will uh, yeah. also supplement. So I think sir, Facebook is equally important because these days I believe the recruiters also look at your social quotient. So they also look at your Facebook to understand. Oh, no, no, no. And, and the LinkedIn is of course important, but Facebook also cannot be denied. So Raghu, you can elaborate on this. So uh, Facebook is, see the thing is this, by nature uh, in, in India, we tend to use social media frivolously, okay? Uh, the thing is this, it also depends upon the user as to how he wants to use the medium effectively. And since Facebook by itself uh, is very, very useful for retailers and people like that, right? And as a recruiter, if I'm actually going to see a Facebook page, I will be seeing the Facebook page to understand the behavioral attributes of the uh, people that I'm planning to recruit. But as uh, Mr. Nagarajan actually rightly pointed out, LinkedIn is a, is a professional networking site and it is beautifully, you know, architected. I mean, let us say, for example, the way, uh, why Facebook will not serve the students the purpose as much as LinkedIn does. Because First of all, the way it is architected, let us take the profile page, LinkedIn profile page. Uh, there is a, a fantastic place for the summary. Then there are places where you can completely uh, put together your experiences in a reverse chronological way or whatever it is. Then you can actually put up your projects. Then you can put up your skills and expertise. Then you can put up your recommendations from your colleagues. Then you can actually showcase many of the things. For example, if I have, the, let's say this article, as soon as this uh, presentation is over, I will actually showcase this entire article for everybody's benefit on the slide share. So 
these are, see the thing is this linkedin is architected in such a way you know it's absolutely like fits into a glove for the professional needs and most importantly for a professional it is possible for him to showcase himself as a subject matter expert in linkedin and definitely facebook will never pro, will never give you that kind of a opportunity because the kind of people that are actually coming to linkedin it's been marketed very well and uh, you know the most of the ceos are there they're all actually transacting business maybe the quality of the conversations today has diluted a bit but you are talking to professionals you are talking in the way it is architected absolutely is just brilliant actually so uh, there is no way in which facebook and linkedin is comparable for for professional needs right for professional yeah. needs linkedin is an ideal platform and uh, sorry to say that there are no comparable platforms to linkedin till date i can tell you that uh, you know in the sense that vouch for this because uh, in last 10 years i have been a linkedin member from 2006 14 years last 10 years uh, i have my linkedin page is always open okay that means uh, for business right i have completely resurrected myself you know i had a bad business patch i came out of this business uh, you know i came out of that in flying colors thanks to linkedin and it is such a fantastic platform you know we have it open all uh, you know in the sense that i can't see any any other uh, window of mine you know is not open but linkedin is always open you're conversing with people you're transacting business there's so much to do but then it's very important that i have actually set up a proper profile you know in the sense that i use it meaningfully i conduct groups i share updates i write blogs so what happens is that you reinvent yourself you provide you project yourself as a very credible person for the other person so i if i put something which is actually it's, it gets validated by my actions in terms of conversations etc etc so there is a so you know in the sense that i have you know in a, if there's anything that i believe more than god it's possibly linkedin so i you know in the sense of professional lives you know linkedin is your ultimate uh, salvation okay i think yeah. that's probably yeah. sorry nagarajan i've gone a little bit uh, i think uh, we are uh, almost uh, the, coming to the end of this session sir, because we are sir, running short of time in, sir two interesting questions if i am allowed sir the yeah. really valid uh-huh. one uh, ragu they have asked uh, is it wise to go for the premium version that's one secondly one student has asked that right. instead of applying through a regular the traditional application route if i apply through linkedin will my cv or will my application get noticed so two okay, questions okay. yeah one minute sir ragu yeah. uh, before you answer that question in continuation to the previous uh, talk session i mean question uh, linkedin is the only network that that is charging you to become member if people are paying 2400 rupees per month for a linkedin premium membership that means there is something to it why facebook is not charging why whatsapp is not charging very true very true No, so no, no, no. if somebody is uh, somebody is willing to pay that means they are able to get some value out of that in a professional sense so i'm just saying it's not the only reason but uh, linkedin provides value that is why their people are ready to pay for that and another thing is i am not on facebook for last 5 years because i am not able to separate my social circle and my official things and for me at in my career right now official things are more important i am able to be in touch with my uh, friends and family through whatsapp and other things so having a linkedin profile keeps me uh, focus on the professional matters here and if a student or anybody is going to contact me on linkedin i am going to take them very seriously so that is my um, first um, uh point about why linkedin is very very important you can be in other places but being in linkedin is going to help you further if you want to succeed in our career so Absolutely. that is the reason we have brought mr ragu here i think you can answer the uh, question now so i will actually you know in the sense that i have a slightly different point of view on the premium subscription that's a revenue model that uh, linkedin does and linkedin actually is a very very powerful platform and uh, you really don't need to buy the premium yeah, yeah these are students you know i'm just putting a perspective Absolutely. they are beginners so yeah sure is, uh, linkedin is see the thing is uh, they they have a subscription model it is probably something they started way back in 2004 and 2005 and they continue with it and it is one big source of revenue as well but the fact is that 
as long as you have you know uh, the, the the linkedin uh, premium model is useful to find out who has come and visited your profile that's the best feature as far as the premium model is concerned but the fact is this the premium model is actually not really very helpful the fact is this that it is very important your linkedin experience is is actually defined by the number of connections that you have right your uh, in, you know your reach is basically for example uh, there's a very interesting thing that you have to keep in mind uh, the number of channels of communication is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 so if there are five people in the room the number of channels of communication is 5 into 4 divided by 2 10 channels of communication so if your network is let us say 50 million people then if your content is good then it will then it has the propensity to get shared by 50 million into 50 million minus 1 divided by 2 so that's how viral transmissions take place so what you have to understand is that if you have the right kind of network for your needs then basically you don't need to get into the premium model at all the premium model is only useful to find out who's who is who has come and visited your profile as such premium model is a subscription model which linkedin is using for the revenue but it's actually not useful so this is my personal because i used to pay for linkedin earlier uh, because i thought you know in the sense that i got a lot of uh, benefit out of it so for three or four years i just like that paid for it but let's move the, forward pardon? let's move forward let's yeah. move forward to the next question yeah. next question okay. yes yeah, so yeah he, he has already given you two questions. Can you repeat, Mr. Aru? Yeah, the second the question, question was, so I'll, I'll just repeat for you, Raghu. The question is, the, what's the difference and which is more better, the traditional application or going via LinkedIn? And there's a third part of it, applying directly to the company website, which is more effective? So the thing is that resume, uh, sh you know, what happens today is that you can actually put in your LinkedIn URL in your resume, okay? Uh, the LinkedIn, so does it answer the question? You can have a resume of yours, have a LinkedIn profile, but what you have to remember is that the LinkedIn profile is certainly not your, not your resume. So you can write your LinkedIn profile in such a way that it augments your resume or is complementary your resume and you add it as a URL in your resume, um, right? Raghu, I think, uh, uh, um, I, I wasn't able to articulate it well. Suppose I'm a student. And so I'll, I'll, get... I'll, come, I'll come to this. So okay. you're asking me, should I go to the website or should I, you know, right, apply through LinkedIn or I should go and uh, directly write to the recruiter? The, tra the, question, the, tradi right? the traditional so, part, yeah. So I'm actually coming to that. What I said is that oh, the LinkedIn profile can be appended to the resume. But the fact is this, if you send it to the website or if you apply through LinkedIn, it can all get lost. But if you actually connect with the recruiter, pick up the phone and talk to him and find out that's the best way to apply. Because what is important, what you have to also remember is that there is a beautiful aspect called shared contacts in LinkedIn. You have to use, you have to know how to use the shared contacts very usefully. Suppose let us say I am applying to X in HCL Technologies. And if I have to reach to X, and if I have 15 people who have shared contacts between me and X, I will find out in these 15 people who are the who is the best person that is that i know and who is the best person who's connected to the person in hcl i will get his phone number and i will directly apply to him talk to him because it's in linkedin cold call is eliminated completely you can actually talk to anybody that you want anywhere in the world so it is an opportunity for you to be able to find relationship so never make the mistake of applying to a company website it can get completely lost if we never make the mistake of applying on LinkedIn, it can get completely lost. Because if you see, there is an apply button on LinkedIn and there are some 500 people who have applied there. Most likely the LinkedIn is, uh, the recruiter is going to have hundreds of resumes inbox, he's going to lose. But you have to be able to talk to the person, try to find out and, you know, apply. This is my recommendation. So, go ahead, sir. Okay, uh, Raghu, one question that if someone were to connect someone, I mean, a fresh connect, do I straight away uh, press the connect button or I should put it's a small note? A good, it is always a good idea to write a small note, a very simple note saying that uh, we may not have met. However, keeping in mind, uh, you know, how, how, however, I would like to proactively connect with you, uh, keeping in mind mutually beneficial relationships that are possible in the future. I would be delighted if you accept my invite to connect. It's a very simple note. But basically, you know, you go ahead and say that, look, I've never met. I don't want to take you for granted. 
okay so please uh, you know therefore can try to this one or normally always is a good idea to send a note saying that you met in a particular event and then you would like to connect or we know somebody and then you would like to connect so always a great idea to send an introductory note before you connect does it answer the question yeah, yeah. Uh Raghu, the next question, uh, it's a little off the track, uh, it's off the beaten path. A right. kid has asked, he, right. can I go ahead and create an Indian version of LinkedIn? Basically, he's talking of some Indian version, like you have Zoom, you have some other version. He's saying, can we have an Indian LinkedIn? May not be LinkedIn, some other name. Are we permitted or it's strictly LinkedIn cannot LinkedIn be replicated? It's a, it's a product, right? It's a product. Yeah. It's a very simple product. In a sense that the, the concept is very simple. If people have built Facebook, if people have built See, the thing is this, there are only three, seven building blocks of social media, right? If you have an identity, you can build a profile. Somebody can give an offer, can, can actually build a profile, have conversations, able to share, you know, send connections. That's it. It's as simple as that. Anybody can build a social network. Who's saying that social networks are not possible? It's possible to build. You can build an Adeshi version of your LinkedIn. But if somebody does that, great. Yeah, that's all from me. Yes, yeah, sir. That's all from me. I'm done with it, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, sir. I think uh, one last question Dr. Pradeep Desai has asked, we missed it earlier, is that uh, would uh, social media for digital platforms uh, will be more important uh, in the post corona lockdown scenario? Will it increase? It is, it will always be there. I think uh, post lockdown scenario, I, I, I don't think it will make a difference. I think people are pretty active now. So it will. Yeah, I think good. during during lockdown itself, it has become important now. Yeah. So I uh, social is here to stay. I think as a concept, social is here to stay. Uh, important aspects that probably I never covered during the session is that you know what you have to keep in mind is that social is a two-way communication, and uh, secondly, the uh, the message of a brand is conveyed by the fans of a brand. Let us say, for example, Shah Rukh Khan is, if he is great, it's the fans of Shah Rukh Khan who actually convey the message of Shah Rukh Khan. So you have to understand that if you are, if your brand has to be conveyed, you need to have, you need to network with the right kind of people so that these are the guys who actually will actually convey the message of your brand. So you keep in mind and make sure that you have a clear strategy. Why do you, why do I, why do I want to be in LinkedIn? And what is the kind of strategy do I have to nurture a qualitative and quantitative network? And how do I care for that audience? And you have to have an evolving engagement with the audience. And then you become visible for your needs. So this is the uh, kind of, uh, you know, this is the most important message that you always want to revisit. This is the basics. And this is non-negotiable. 